mystery story. And it's about the, the Candy, Candy Man, Man 1974. 1974. Monsters and demons are a common sight on Halloween night as children take to the streets for trick or treat. But in 1974, a real monster walked around in a disarming disguise, a dad. Ronald Clark O'Brien, today remembered as the man who killed Halloween. He earned the nickname as well as another, the Candyman, because he murdered his own son. Timothy was eight years old and he laced his candy with cyanide. Although the holiday stretches back to antiquity, children in costume going door to door and asking for treats is rel relatively recent, only about a century old. The, tra the tradition firmly established by the 1950s, along with trick-or-treating, rose another phenomenon. Panic about people slipping poison, razor blades, pins, and other instruments of destruction into the goodies. Most of these Halloween stories have been regulated to urban myth. O'Brien is the one documented case that is cited when talk turns to killer Halloween candy. O'Brien, then 30, his wife, Dinan, and his two children, Timothy and Elizabeth, started Halloween evening with a family meal at a friend's house. Jim Bates and his wife and their children in Pasadena, Texas. Now Elizabeth was only five years old at the time. After dinner, the two dads left the house, escorting three children, Bates' son and O'Brien's son and his daughter, out into the drizzly night for an annual candy hunt. One house along the route was dark, but the children still rang the doorbell. There was no answer, so they moved on. O'Brien lagged behind and then moments later came running to catch up. He was waving five giant pixie sticks, 22 inch straws filled with flavored sugar. He told the kids it was their lucky day because rich neighbors were distributing expensive treats. Each of these three children on the walk got one pixie stick. Later, O'Brien gave the fourth to Bates' other child, a five-year-old daughter. The final pixie stick went to the trick-or-treat visitor who rang the doorbell at the Bates' house. Back at their home in Deer Park, Texas, O'Brien told his children they could each have a treat before bedtime. Timothy chose the pixie stick, but he stopped after the first bite because he said it tasted bitter. Timothy's dad offered him Kool-Aid to wash it down. Moments later, O'Brien heard the boy crying, Daddy, Daddy. It seems like it wasn't long before he was up and complaining his stomach was hurting and he didn't feel so good. He was bent over, vomiting, and I was holding him when he was just limp. O'Brien told the Associated Press, we thought we were so careful we had even wondered if we should even go out trick-or-treating this year. There isn't going to be any more trick-or-treating for us, as he played. An autopsy found enough cyanide in the boy's body to kill three grown men. Examination of the pixie stick showed that someone had opened the tube and replaced some of the candy with poison. Then the tube had been stapled shut. One of the children who had gotten a tainted pixie stick had been tempted but fell asleep before he managed to pull out the staple. The other tubes were recovered before any child tried to eat the contents. Police became suspicious of O'Brien's story, especially after he offered his version of how he came into possession of the pixie sticks. He said that he rang the doorbell of a dark house and the man thrust five pixie sticks at him. He said he saw nothing but a hairy arm. It turned out that the man that lived there was an air traffic controller, 
and he had 200 people that can vouch that he was at work at the time that this supposedly had taken place. Then detectives delving into O'Brien's background came up with some startling facts. O'Brien, an optician who worked for Texas State Optical, was about $100,000 in debt, had lost his house, and was about on the verge of losing his car. He was also about to lose his job because his bosses had discovered that he was stealing. In the decade before the crime, he had been booted from 21 other positions. To top it all off, investigators learned that he had taken out about $60,000 in life insurance on his children. Police speculated that O'Brien had planned to kill his kids for an insurance money. Within days, O'Brien was under arrest for the murder of his son. Detectives were never able to pin down the source of the cyanide. But several witnesses at O'Brien's trial stated that in May of 1975, he told them an interesting story of obtaining poison and how much it would have take to kill someone. His sister-in-law also said at the boy's funeral, the grieving dad mused about the insurance money and taking a long vacation. The only inescapable conclusion is that this man killed his own flesh and blood for money. Prosecutor Mike Hinton told the court, think of how easy it would be for him to kill a stranger for money. The jury took 46 minutes to find O'Brien guilty and worthy of the death penalty. Appeals dragged on for nearly 10 years and O'Brien maintained he was innocent to the end. On March 31st, 1984, the Candy Man had a last supper of steak, french fries, peas, Boston cream pie before his execution by lethal injection. As the sentence was carried out, Demonstrators in Halloween masks stood outside the prison yelling, Trick or treat. 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 That's it, man. Okay. We did it. There is no ending. Okay. We did the ending.